Hello there, Matthew Wing, digital content developer for the Naval Storker Foundation, here to offer the very first of our video blog web series where I'm going to answer questions that users uh, throughout our, our social media interfaces are asking. And this one comes from Twitter, a direct message was asking about our new and most recent project, which is called uh, NHF Tweets Midway. And if you don't know anything about it, I know we have advertised about this a little bit, but NHF Tweets Midway is, is a ongoing project over the course of several weeks where we actually tweet minute by minute on our NHF Tweets Midway Twitter page uh, the events leading up to and during the Battle of Midway. And basically what this person is asking, uh, two things in the uh, direct message. One, uh, what is your process? And two, and most importantly, I think he was really curious about how it's actually done. And as a digital content developer for the foundation, I'm, I'm more than happy to discuss both. Uh, how do you condense the greatest naval battle in the history of the United States Navy into 140 characters or less? Uh, the answer is you really can't. Uh, if you can, please please email me and let me know uh, your reasoning, but uh, I really don't think you could do it. So the idea is that we would expand this uh, to discuss a little bit about the events leading up to uh, and during the Battle of Midway, because uh, a lot of stuff happens between the middle and end of May, especially in the intelligence community, uh, and how that made a direct impact on the actual battle itself. The first thing we want to talk about with the process is sources. You need a lot of sources. You need uh, primary documents, you need secondary documents, archival footage, you need um, archival sources. I know I used a lot of um, chronologies that were both available in books, uh, primary and secondary, and online. Um, if you guys are familiar that uh, Chester Nimitz this year put out his uh, gray book, or the War College did that. Um, Chester Nimitz's gray book, which is basically his uh, wartime diary and correspondence, uh, was a major help in figuring this out. Um, and also, I think a lot of these secondary sources that are written during the time, uh, Prang's Miracle of Midway, if you guys have ever read this one, uh, Samuel Elliott Morrison's History and Chronology of uh, Operations During World War II, this is an excellent resource. Uh, and I would be remiss if I said I didn't use the Naval Historical Foundation's coffee table book, The Navy, which is still available on our museum store. Anyway, to get back to that, uh, you have to go through a lot of sources to be able to sort this out. Uh, you have to go and make sure that the chronology is all right. There's the, the problem when you're doing this with Hawaii time versus Japan time, which makes things quite difficult in being able to shuffle this into basically a timeline. We've only been doing this for about a week now, and I already have about 17 pages in a document of all these tweets. We've done about 270 tweets now, so I would, I would guess we're going to be approaching 700 by the time it's done on the 7th of June. So I wanted to just show you one example on how I'm condensing a lot of these sources into 140 characters or less. Uh, you can see right here, that I'm going to use this example from uh, Admiral Nimitz in one of his gray paper uh, posts and diaries. Uh, you can see here this was from May 27th. Uh, on page 543, it says, uh, both Task Force 16 and 17 are in port. The damage to the Yorktown is not enough to prevent operations on the evening of the 29th. She will be dry docked to patch oil leaks. And you can see here on the screen basically how I'm able to condense that. The, the great thing about some of these sources are, because it's written in kind of the, the military jargon, they're almost written like tweets, very condensed, very to the point in matter uh, of fact. Everybody is given, everybody, person involved, the ships involved, especially uh, the carriers, both on the Japanese side and on the American side, are, are given hashtags. And I wanted to make sure that I had a nice balance between how I'm handling uh, the Imperial Japanese Navy and Yamamoto, and Admiral Nimitz and the United States Navy and also the the people that were on Midway and which includes also the uh, Aleutians operations which came into play uh, during this one the Japanese raided Dutch Harbor um, so basically everyone has a hashtag so all you have to do when you follow NHF tweets Midway is to click on the hashtag and you see there's like a conversation that is unfolding it's almost like characters in a play of course this was not a play this was real life and these are real situations that uh, we today, you know, 72 years later, can see in hindsight. So the great thing is that, of course, we all know how the battle ends, but I think the real part of history and what a lot of is missing online is the actual uh, idea that things can be organic. Things can actually flow and process. Things can actually uh, unfold before your eyes that you might not have seen before uh, outside the realm of just reading it in a book. And that's one of the reasons why I really 
wanted to do this project. Uh, one of the things that we're also going to do is on our web page, not on the NHF Tweets Midway Twitter page, but we're going to put an order of battle online that has linkable hashtags on it. So you can actually click on uh, the people or the squadrons or the carriers that are involved. You can see the running conversation that goes on with them. Everything that involves Yorktown is going to be hashtag CV5. Anything with the USS Enterprise is going to be hashtag CV6. And you can see all the different squadrons that, that are involved with each of the carriers and their operations during the battle itself. Um, so I entreat you guys to, to follow us either uh, on uh, Facebook for some of the updates to NHF Tweets Midway or on the actual Twitter page itself. Uh, you know, not asking you guys that you have to do this or any kind of commitment, but I think this is going to be a really exciting way for us, for me especially, I've learned, I've learned a lot, to understand the Battle of Midway and to be able to process this for uh, kind of an updated way that future generations can come to understand and appreciate and love naval history. So uh, cheers and enjoy.